My name is Henry Oakley, I'm the Garden Fellow at the Royal College of Physicians where we have a medicinal garden with 1,000 plants from the history of medicine again, uh, set out mostly by continent for where they used. And there are free garden tours with tea and coffee, biscuits, um, first Wednesday of every month, 2 o'clock, just turn up or ring reception to say you're coming. Is that alright? <laughs> You've got to have the advertising break at the beginning. Uh, and there's also a little book, which we do which uh, has 60 plants from the college uh, garden set out week by week and they're 60 weeks in the year because they're five weeks in every month with a per perpetual diary um, and uh, 200 words on the history of each plant and what it's used for. Five pounds to you, 20% off, <laughs> all right? Um, I'm going to talk to you about the how and why plants were used as medicines. And uh, I come at it, from, at it from an allopathic and Darwinian perspective uh, because plants have been trying to kill us, it says 300 million years, but 370 million years ago plants as they invaded the land from the sea were responsible for the first great extinction, wiping out 70% of the life on the planet. Now ever since then plants have been trying to kill us. For th they have. Believe me, I'm a psychiatrist. I recognise paranoia when I see it. <laughs> and we've only been around for three million years, so they've had a great head start on us. Um, plants which were edible got eaten and did not survive to reproduce. All right? Plants which were poisonous and uh, didn't get eaten and they survived to reproduce. Animals which found poisons tasteful and nice died. Animals which found poisons tasted bad, and you know, a lot of selective breeding went on, right, with extermination of the unfittest, uh, they found they survived. And that's why most of us find poisons taste bad. All right? <coughs> then the other things happened. Those of your ancestors who had strong stomachs and could eat poisons and digest them and absorb them, they died. Those of us whose stomachs were sensitive, whose ancestors had st sensitive stomachs, and who vomited or had diarrhea when you ate a poison, they lived. And that's why most poisons make us sick. Those of us whose children ate green vegetables died, which is why children are genetically implanted with a gene to stop them eating greens. <laughs> See, there's interminable logic about all of this. And as for broccoli... <laughs> anyway, enough of that. What I'm really trying to say is there was absolutely no j reason for plants to evolve to produce medicines for us. They produced things which killed people, or poisoned people, or did damage to them, or interfered with their DNA division, and things like that. So that's one. Yeah. I'm going to get this right eventually. Ah, oh, there we are. Okay, yeah, okay. Right. And I also wish to quote from one of the early herbalists, Mr. Pliny, who said people who take medicines from herbalists, it's tantamount to committing suicide, but uh, I'll move on quickly. The earliest reason why plants were used as medicines was the humoral theory of medicine, propounded by Mr. Hippocrates uh, in 400 BC, and he lived on the island of Kos, an island in the Aegean just off the coast of Greece, and he sat under a plane tree and he taught his medical students. This plane tree, a plane tree exists on the island of Kos, which has a diameter of four meters, 12 feet, with a little notice which says under this uh, plane tree, uh, Hippocrates taught his medical students. People who believe labels on plants or on anything, even medicines, believe in the tooth fairy and Father Christmas, and uh, this tree is only about 400 years old, there are no 2,400 year old trees. But anyway, somebody took some seed from that tree, took it to the New York Botanic Garden, raised some saplings, sent them to Kew, Kew sent us two cuttings, rooted cuttings, we planted two in the college gardens. After a while, before they had TPOs, tree protection orders, we cut one down because one's quite enough, and in, uh, <laughs> since 1965 that tree has uh, escalated and unlike the London plain it has roots like poplars and cherry trees which run horizontally across the lawn into the foundations of the college so we're not going to be there forever. 
Anyway, this is Mr. Hippocrates, father of medicine. And he, with the Aesculapian school of medicine, uh, discovered that there were only four elements which made up everything in the world. And you remember that the four elements were earth, air, fire, and water. And it was very straightforward. It was quite obvious and logical. You got a seed, you put it in the earth, and you added water, and it came up into the air and had fire from the sun, and you had a tree. Yes? And you lit it. Actually, they weren't sure about the air, but you lit it. But the tree, and you got ash, which was earth, you got water vapour, and you got fire. You also got carbon dioxide, but they didn't know about that, but you know, we'll forget about that. Now, it was for the next 2,000 odd years, until about uh, 1785, that there were only four elements. And hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, and so on. Bottom there. The periodic table didn't really start till about 1785. Um, and... Uh, it makes life much more complicated. But they also realised that the human body was made up of four elements as well, and that the... Uh, they were a bit curious about why we were warm-blooded. Do you know why we are warm-blooded? We were made up of various elements, the hot humours, the cold humours, the earth, the air and fire, but they reckon we had a bit more fire in us than, than uh, cold things like plants. And they observed, according to the Hippocratic writings, that the air we breathe in doesn't support combustion as well as the air we breathe out. They also observed that if you got this match, or you got a candle, and you put it in a bowl of water, and you lit it, and you put a jam jar over the top, after a while, the candle goes out, yes? And the air no longer supports combustion. And from this, they realised that the air contains fire. And the air we breathe, they observed, supported combustion better than the air we breathed out. So obviously, we took some of the fire from the air, yes? And that kept us warm as we breathed in and out. And it, you, if you stop breathing, you become cold. All right? Never mind. Anyway, so the body was composed of these four humours, red, cold, yellow, uh, 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 black, and imbalance or disturbance of these called illness, uh, disturbance, particularly the hot and cold ones, called a distemper. And we still have this term, a distemper, referring to the imbalance of the Hippocratic elements. And uh, they were thought to have various qualities as well. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, medicines were thought to have various qualities, and certain plants were thought to be cold plants, hot plants, dry plants, moist ones. And if you had a fever, uh, you would treat it uh, with cold plants or with bloodletting. And bloodletting to take off the hot choleric humour went on for until about 1850. And if you had a cold, you treat it with hot, spicy plants. And to this day, we still practice this. If you go out in the rain in the November and December, and you come back and you have a cold, and you're bringing up a great excess of phlegm, of the cold phlegmatic humour, you treat it with a hot, spicy drink, like uh, uh, hot rum and uh, lemons, or cinnamon and red wine, and things like that. So this was the Hippocratic theory of humours and medicines, and why plants were used as medicines. Still doing it, aren't I? Uh, yes. Once I press that, it doesn't work. Never mind. Um, and if you had depression, if you had depression, That one, there. Yes. Okay, that'd be easier. Yeah. Right. If you had depression, you had an excess. You were melancholic. You had an excess. You had a black humour, a black mood, and you had to take something, a purgative, to get rid of the black fecal material in your body. And basically, if you were feeling liverish, whatever that meant, and you had an excess of the yellow bilious humour, you had to take something to make you vomit to get rid of the bile. And of course, all plants are poisonous, and if you just took a simple poison, it would purge you or make it vomit. And that was one of the bases of many of the medicines of, uh, early, of early years. <laughs>